Hello everyone, my name is Eric Chappell, Community Evangelist for InfraWorks 360, and I'd like to talk to you today about what's new in the summer 2015 release of InfraWorks 360. Before you continue with this presentation, I'd like you to take a moment and read the disclaimer on your screen that addresses preview features and any future technology that's discussed during this presentation. For this update, we wanted to focus on several key areas as to how we deliver new technology to you. In the first area, we want to allow you to build better context, a better backdrop, a better environment constructed of existing conditions that you can house your new designs in and create your ideas. Next, we wanted you to be able to design with more power, more analytical tools, and deeper detailed designs so that you could create more with more detail. And finally, collaborate more effectively. We've extended our powerful web tools even more, making collaboration through the web better and easier. So let's look at the first area, which is to build better context. The first improvement we'll talk about actually comes before you start building context in InfraWorks 360. It's a new sign-in experience. It's simpler and more streamlined, your credentials are remembered for a longer period of time, meaning that you'll have to sign in less frequently. And you'll find that it's also a more integrated sign-in experience. We did this because we want to give you easy and efficient access to this technology. Multi-scale material styles are an exciting new feature of this summer 2015 update. These allow you to have realistic textures whether you're zoomed way in or way out in the model. In the image on the left, I've zoomed way in to the doorstep of the home and you can see how realistic the grass texture looks in this image. In the middle image, I've zoomed out so that I can see several homes and it still looks good. It doesn't look tiled or computer generated. And in the image on the right, I'm zoomed out even further where I can see the entire project and then the context beyond it and still the grass texture looks very realistic. And this is just one way that we're enabling you to build better context in your InfraWorks models so that the model looks good no matter what area you're looking at, how far you're zoomed in, or how far you're zoomed out. So let's take a look at how these multi-scale material styles work in InfraWorks 360. Currently I'm zoomed way into this area in front of the doorstep and I've got one of the old material styles assigned which looks fantastic, by the way, at this zoom scale, but as I zoom out, it starts to look a bit tiled and computer-generated. Now let's try one of the new multi-scale styles. I'll click and drag the grass style, and you can see that it also looks very realistic at this zoom scale, but as I zoom out, the texture actually changes so that it always looks good, regardless of whether I'm zoomed way out or way in. And that's the magic of multi-scale material styles. Let's talk about custom shapes in your transportation styles. What does this mean? It means you can take a shape that you've created in say an Autodesk product like Civil 3D or AutoCAD, you can export that as an SDF file, and then you can extrude that shape along your road or rail style in InfraWorks 360. And the way you do it is you use the custom profiles option as, as shown in the middle image on your screen. What that enables you to do is extrude that shape along the path of the road as you see in the image on the right. So I've used this example of a jersey barrier to create a nice smooth jersey barrier component to my road style. The advantages of this, one is that it gives you a much smoother effect because you're extruding along a continuous path rather than inserting blocks of 3D models along the side of the road. It also gives you the flexibility to draw any shape you want, allowing you to create just about anything for your road, rail, or whatever linear feature you happen to be designing and representing in InfraWorks 360. So not only does this allow you to build better context, it also allows you to build better design because these transportation styles, the road and rail styles, apply to existing features as well as design features.
Let's take a look at how these custom shapes work in transportation styles. You can see the section of road I have here, and I've assigned a style of ramp with barrier to it. And I've used the old approach of using road decorations to assign the barrier. And to show you the difference, I'm going to switch this out with a custom profile, is what it's called actually. So I'll edit the style, and I'll go to the decorations area and remove the current decoration, which is the Jersey Barrier model that's inserted at intervals along the road. And instead, I'll use the custom profiles option, and for the barrier, I'll assign a custom SDF file that I've stored on my desktop. Now this SDF file I created by going into Civil 3D, drawing out the shape of a Jersey Barrier, and exporting it to SDF. It's pretty easy. It took me about 10 minutes. I'm going to turn off the Generate Back Faces option, and I'll also assign a material to this custom profile. And what I'd like to use is a light gray concrete material. And if I go to the preview at the bottom, you can see the Jersey Barrier. Now because I created it in Imperial units, it's extra big, so I'll need to go back into my options and scale that down to be consistent with metric units. And that's better. My preview tells me how it's going to appear in the model. I can click OK. Because the style is already assigned to the road section in the model, it will update automatically and you can see the nice smooth appearance that I get to the Jersey Barrier for this road style. In addition to the custom shapes, you'll also see some improvements to rail styles. Better transition between rail style changes when you vary the style along the length of a rail. Better terrain definition with tunnels, rail, and transportation styles in general. And also you'll find that when you modify a rail style, it also includes a subgrade component. Next, let's talk about how we're allowing you to design with more power in this summer 2015 update. The first feature is huge news for InfraWorks 360. You can now create roundabouts in your InfraWorks 360 models. And not only that, you can do it in literally seconds. You can click an intersection, change it to a roundabout, and then once you've done that, you can choose from a list of industry standard roundabout configurations and the software will design the roundabout for you. It really couldn't be any easier. Our commitment to giving you more tools to design with more power in InfraWorks 360. Let's take a look at how easy it is to create a roundabout in InfraWorks 360. I'm simply going to click this intersection to bring up the intersection asset card. Here in the Junction Type section, all I have to do is click the Roundabout icon and the intersection is magically converted to a roundabout. Then it's just a matter of choosing the right design standard and my roundabout will be reconfigured according to the design standard that I've chosen. Component Roads is a feature that you'll see as a preview in this Summer 2015 update of InfraWorks 360. This feature set gives you more control over the details of your road design by allowing you to build out your roads using assemblies for things like lanes, shoulders, and other items. It allows you to do things like control lane slopes and other complex road geometry. But again, a reminder that this is a preview only. It's not for production. It's something we're working on. There's no guarantee that this will become a supported feature in future releases, but we would love for you to try it out and give us some feedback on how we're doing with this feature. Another preview feature you'll have access to in this update is traffic simulation. This will allow you to visualize and analyze the flow of traffic for your road designs. It's an easy to use interface and it allows you to create better designs by determining how your design affects the flow of traffic. Again, this is preview only, not for production, but we'd love for you to try it out and give us some feedback. We're also giving you additional tools to design with more power when you're using the drainage tools of InfraWorks 360. Now when you're analyzing pipe performance, you can factor in the annual exceedance probability, or the AEP, which means you can analyze your pipe based on a 10-year storm, 50-year storm, 
100 year storm or anything that you see on the list there on the image in front of you. It also allows you to consider the tailwater condition and there are choices with that feature as well. In addition, drainage design integrates with the new component roads preview and understand some of the geometry that's going on with component roads in your InfraWorks 360 model. Again, I'll remind you that's a preview feature. It's not supported, but we'd love for you to try it out and give us some feedback on that feature. In addition to that, we've also got Project Boulder, which is available in labs, which again, of course, is a uh, feature that you can try out. It's not for production. This allows you to perform flood analyses within InfraWorks 360. And we've also got Project Chameleon, another lab project, which allows you to build custom content for your drainage networks in InfraWorks 360. Let's take a look now at some bridge improvements in this summer update to InfraWorks 360. First, you'll find expanded capability with abutments. You have abutment types that you can choose from, and also an asset card which gives you detailed configuration and modeling capabilities for your abutments. Generally speaking, you'll be able to do more than you ever could with the detailed design of your bridge abutments. In addition, we'll give you access to another preview feature, line girder analysis. This gives you the capability to perform cloud-based detailed structural analysis of your bridge girders. Again, I can't think of a better set of examples of us allowing you to design with more power in InfraWorks 360. Please remember though that line girder analysis is a preview feature. It's not fully supported, but we'd love for you to test it out and give us your feedback. Let's take a look at our final topic, which is collaborate more effectively. In this latest update to InfraWorks 360, you're going to find that the web interface of infraworks360.autodesk.com much more closely resembles the InfraWorks 360 home experience of the desktop application. And we want you to have a more consistent experience, whether you're using the desktop application or your favorite mobile device, or even the web on your desktop computer. We also have a new panorama view, which lets you look around the model. Now this is also a preview feature, and like the other preview features we've discussed earlier, uh, this is not for production, and we'd like you to test it out and give us some feedback on what you think of this feature. But again, no promises that this feature will actually exist in a future version of the software in a fully supported form. Let's take a quick look at how the panorama feature works in InfraWorks 360. I'm in my model, and I've got a series of bookmarks here, and one of them happens to be called Center of Town. So I'll click that bookmark to kind of demonstrate the view. And if I go to this bookmark and then pan around the model or orbit around the model, you can kind of get an idea how this bookmark is set up. Now the way Panorama works is when I publish the model and I choose the Scenarios and Web Views option, it will include any bookmarks that I have in my model as Panorama Views in the Web Viewer. Now I've already published the model and with this bookmark available, so we'll switch over to the Web View and take a look at the result. So now if we look at the web view of the same model, we see these markers that represent panoramas. If I click on one of them, here you'll see the center of town panorama, which corresponds with the center of town bookmark that I had in my model. I can click on the preview, and now I've got a panorama view from that view perspective in the model. So it allows me to stand at this location in the model and look in any direction, up, down, left, or right, and really get a great sense of how the model appears from this vantage point. A very powerful way to share your model with somebody who maybe doesn't have InfraWorks 360 and only has access with a browser either through their desktop computer or a mobile device. So now that you've seen all the exciting new capabilities that InfraWorks 360 has in this summer 2015 update, what do you do next? Well, of course you're going to download the latest version. And if you're a current customer, you can do that at manage.autodesk.com. Or if you're not and you want to try out the latest version of InfraWorks 360, you can go to autodesk.com slash InfraWorks, click free trial, 
and simply download and install the 30-day fully functional free trial. So go out and get the latest release right now. You're going to want to test out this exciting new functionality in the summer release of InfraWorks 360. Thank you and have a great day.